Hi, let's see if we can present this uh, short video on how the serial transmitter may like to work. Okay, let's see how it is going to work. Okay, this is the serial transmitter and now we have in mind just talk about a little bit about the specifications, saving time for presenting the plan later and let's go to the end um, explaining in a third video the developing and the simulation sections, okay, that goes together interactively. But first of all, we have to describe the specifications in some way of a circuit that has this kind of symbol and may like to work as stated in this kind of uh, diagram in time, where you see uh, the data in and how the serial out is generated uh, one bit after the other, like that. So let's see if we can solve that as a finite state machine, you see, but now in C and for a microcontroller. Hi, this is the project 10, okay? The project 10 in which we will talk about, you know, a 4-bit serial transmitter and uh, with the idea in mind that transferring the circuit that you know very well that can be invented in BHDL. So let's transfer it to uh, C language. And so let's build it for a microcontroller as uh, this is the idea that we have in mind. Invent finite state machines, but instead of by means of pure hardware, let's try to uh, organize the software, you know, the program in C for a microcontroller so that it can run finite state machines. And you know, to do that, you have to consider two kind of signals, the same that you saw in P9. You see, the idea of reading inputs or pulling, so you have a specific function in the main loop to go and read in every loop the level of the signal and you also have this new idea of interrupts, okay? So that you can detect, for example, the start button or, you know, the rising edge or the falling edge of a clock signal. So with this idea in mind of working with edges, uh, active edges from some signals by means of interrupts and with this idea of translating a finite state machine into C software so that it can run into a microprocessor, we can present you several examples. And the 4-bit serial transmitter is simply one of them. Quite interesting because it's a classical circuit in telecommunications industry. It is absolutely everywhere, right? So the idea of the circuit was, uh, was presented in class and we discussed it for a long time, but some way that is the block, okay? That is the symbol that we have in mind to convert into, you know, an application that runs in a microprocessor. So if this is the circuit, you have the data to transmit, okay? This is the data that you like to transmit, data in. And this is the start button. This is what we were saying now, the start button. The let's start the transmission of this data in series so you have the serial output wire and at this speed 150 earth so this means at this at this level it means bits per second and so the microcontroller will run as a computer you see with an oscillator a crystal oscillator a quartz crystal oscillator of 4 megahertz and it's going to work in some way like this, the same way that you saw in the timing diagram that is the next picture. When you start a start button, the machine starts serializing bit by bit uh, the data to the serial out. And so at the end, an end of transmission bit is also transmitted. So the machine indicates in this way with this kind of flag that the job has been finished so that the machine, you know, the serial transmitter is ready for transmitting and capturing, uh, you know, you see, read this data in again and, trans and transmit it 
if you have another start button that way okay so this is the classical circuit and that is the way we describe the way it works with this uh, with this example of timing diagram you see it is the idea of transmitting a bit at a time so as you can imagine what is important here is this idea that the events go in time uh, occurring for example some data is present for example this number one 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 zero four b and you have a clock ticking but then there is the signal start button so from now on you see you like to start the transmission so what is that it has to happen well the microcontroller or the finite state machine has to detect from now on because you have given the signal so this edge has been detected from now on the machine has to detect the first rising edge of interest from the clock and from now on you see uh, a star bit that is always zero is sent through the wire and that bit lasts as you see for a full period of the clock so you see 6.66 milliseconds this is the duration in the wire of every single bit that you are transmitting and then you see the data is serialized in this way shifting to the right for example you will like to transfer the data zero the first so this zero goes first so this is the data zero you see and then goes in another clock the data one and then the data two and then the data three and when you have finished with the data you see the serial out goes marking and the marking level is all the time one so this is the marking level when idle when the machine is idle you see it is sending a one all the time to indicate for example that it is idle, yes, but to indicate, for example, to the receiver that the circuit is alive, you see, you have 5 volts, for example. So this means that the receiver uh, can see that the circuit, the transmission is right, not used, but in conditions. So when the data has fully transmitted, you see the 4 bits, then there is the time to send uh, uh, a star pool end of transmission pools and then you see the machine goes idle again until any time late any time later doesn't matter how much time you know any time later you like to transmit again so you click a button you see you click a button and now it happens the same thing the machine starts working the same way waiting for the first rising edge of interest in the clock you see for example when idle the clock is of no interest but when the start transmission has been detected now it happens that the clock is yes it is of interest so from now on you send again this idea this star bit and then again the new data that has been captured at this position here is when you are capturing for example 0001 and so this is the data 0 and then this is the data 1 the data 2 and the data 3 you see the data 3 and after this ser serialization of the four bits of this nibble of information another end of transmission is sent or is indicated in this extra signal that is you see like a flag to indicate that the machine has finished with the job of transmitting the nibble and that way all the time right so this is the way it works okay this is the way it works and indeed it seems a quite simple circuit okay but you can imagine that that is a simplification precisely this exercise was taken from an exam so in an exam as you can imagine you cannot complicate the things very much but what we are talking about here you know is simply a transmitter okay we are talking about the transmitter this is what we are talking about you have a, a transmitter a serial transmitter so 
So if you see that the, this application, the device manager, for example, in your computer, you have a lot of devices, batteries, biometric devices, Bluetooth, you know, every single hardware device that is connected, for example, as a peripheral, the monitor, the network adapter, and other devices. You see, you have serial ports. This is exactly the circuit that we have in mind. So when you attach, for example, an Arduino board to your computer, you see, just now the it is in a scanning sequence and new hardware is detected so here it is you have the arduino one detected and so it is interpreted it is connected yes it is a usb wire but you know the machine understands to make it simple that you have a, an asynchronous communication device here and it, it assigns a number for example the port the serial port com8 for example that depends on the many other ports that you are using. But you see, this time, the Arduino board that I've just connected to my portable computer has been understood as the COM8. And what is the meaning of this? Well, look at this. You can configure the settings of this port. For example, the bits per second. Here we have an example that runs at 150 Earth. All right. That is what we talk about just now so look at this this is only one of the many standard frequencies that you can program in your computer to transmit data bits from 75 bit per second for the slowest devices that you can imagine up to you see uh, 128,000 bits per second that's the point and then there is there is this idea of how wide is the data that you like to transmit for example by default is 8 bit and a byte but you see the 4 bit data transmission that we are saying here in this project is also possible so you can program or configure the number of bits that you will serialize 4 5 6 7 8 and then there is something else that is not contemplated in this simple example is this idea of the parity you can add at the end of the data bits that you are transmitting a parity bit for example an even parity bit or an odd parity bit so the total number of bits for example if you are transmitting four so with this parity odd the five bits that you have just transmitted have an odd parity okay just one one three ones five ones and, and that way okay so you can do that non parity or just odd or even parity and then you see here we are using a single stop bit which is a one but we can configure two stops bits or just one and a half you see that's the point and then you know this professional serial port that is attached to the computer can also have something that interesting here we are transmitting one nibble four bits at a time okay but you know that if you have to do that for real, it's like the keyboard interface. It, you are you will click in keys at different speeds and, and perhaps the machine is doing something else. So you have a buffer that is capturing and storing, you see, the 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 data, the, the keys that you are clicking, the ASCII codes of the keys that you are clicking. So in the same way, you can transmit uh, from a buffer or you can receive data from another computer or another peripheral okay and you can store that data into this first in first out buffer you know uh, so that you are not uh, losing any single byte or data transmitted or received it that's that's the way it works okay and as you can imagine a computer is fully equipped with serial communications ports look at this this is the port 8 but you have many some of them now are in use in my computer but you know you have many more so you can change the number and install in a single computer many serial transmitters and receivers like that okay that is indeed this device that we are studying here is what is called a universal when you, you study the professional circuit, not just this example, when you study that as a peripheral in a microcontroller, for example, this is a universal, a synchronous receiver and transmitter 
peripheral or subsystem. It is there as a peripheral in a microprocessor. So you can use it to connect your isolated microcontroller with another device, okay? That way.